before we dive into this week's chapter of Eden Zero, I must give a massive shout out to Fleggies on Twitter because he or she drew some amazing fan art of my avatar. I mean, like, golly, bro, do y'all see this? It looks incredible. Yo, shout out to you, Fleggies. You're an amazing artist. Uh, this is so cool, and I appreciate it a lot. But on the other hand, yo, what's up, Fleggies? What are you trying to do, bro? You draw this amazing fan art of my avatar that puts the avatar that I drew drew to shame. And now, after seeing this amazing fan art, the people gotta watch my raggedy ass avatar for the rest of the video, bro. Like, Come on, bro. I'm just joking. It's all love. By the way, if any of you guys have like fan art, be sure to hit me up on Twitter. I'll always like and retweet it and all that stuff. Also, if it has to do with like fairy tale or like Eden Zero and it has my avatar in there, actually, you know what? The fan art, it doesn't even have to have my avatar as well as the series. You can just send me fan art of fairy tale that you've drawn and I might just put it before the, the video where I talk about the chapter. I might make it a regular thing, but who knows? So let me know in the comment section down below. But enough about the fan art because it is time to move on to chapter 106 of Eden Zero. So let's -a go. So this chapter opens up with a character that we have not seen in a minute, Shao Mai. But the thing is, is I feel like her appearance here was a little bit, I don't know, a little bit underwhelming. Usually whenever Shao Mai appears, she gives like the tiniest bit of hint towards the future. Here, she was just giving a recap. Maybe there's some hidden message in here that we won't figure out until later on in this arc and then we can come back to this page and be like, or the two pages that she's in, and then we can be like, oh my gosh, in chapter 106 on page one, she said this and this ties into what happens later on and oh my gosh. But from what I can tell, it's just a simple recap. But from there, we then move on to the Eden Zero crew and they're just like gazing at the AOI? Oi, the Aoi? I still don't know how to say the Cosmos name. The the AOY Cosmos, bro. They're just enjoying it. They're like, wow, this is so cool. And the one who actually tells the main crew what specific Cosmos they're in is Jin. But he doesn't really engage with them any further beyond that point, except to tell them that he has no intention of fraternizing with them. He's only here out of necessity. In all honesty, though, I'm surprised he's like stuck around for this long. I understand that like sister is his only option when it comes to healing clean, but like, you think he'd apply a little bit of pressure to her to be like, hey, heal her now. I get that she told him that he had to wait, but like, I don't know, bro. You think he just like pressed the issue a little bit more because after all, like he said, clean is the only reason why he is here. Also, do you guys genuinely think that Jin will join the crew or do you think that after clean is healed, he'll just go off with her somewhere and then the two of them will become like reoccurring characters that appear every so often? For me at this point, I want him to join the crew, but I don't know if he will. Again, I, I want him to join, and there's a strong possibility that he might, but there's also still the possibility that he might not, so. Moving on. We then get Sister, Witch, and Hermit discussing really what to do next, because now that they're in this different cosmos, they really don't have a plan. Because not only were their memories of outer space completely wiped, so were the Eden Zero's logs. But Hermit says that she might be able to repair the log. Witch, who now has her helmet off and is looking fine by the way, asks if Hermit has found something, and then Hermit proceeds to tell her that 15 years ago, the Zero went from the Sakura cosmos to the AOI cosmos, or Awoi cosmos cosmos or whatever, just like they're doing now. And then Witch chimes in again and says, so perhaps coincidentally we're taking the same route we did 15 years ago. That is a massive gamble, by the way. <laughs> but back to it. She then says we were heading for the fire planet Red Cave. I think. Again, what a massive gamble to take. You're just gonna roll the dice on maybe you coincidentally taking the same exact route as you did 15 years ago? I thought y'all were supposed to be smart, you're robots. But moving on, so they decide that Red Cave is their new destination because there might be a clue about Mother there. Hermit then chimes in and says that there is something else that she found in the log, a strange term, a Poseidon Nero. This dude is part of the Oration Says Galactica. We found the third member, boys. And this dude, by the sound of it, is way Way, way more powerful than Drake and Joe. Because while Drake would usurp a planet and rule it from behind the scenes using all his dirty little tactics and all that stuff, Nero just outright rules the entirety of the AOI cosmos, or Aoi, or however you say it. He rules it. He is the king. 
Oh, sorry, wait a minute, that's disrespectful. He ain't no king, he is an emperor. And we get the silhouette of him in the chapter and he looks really cool and different from any character we've seen so far. Let me tell you, bro, I am expecting big things from Poseidon Nero. This dude better have like one of the most powerful ether gears out there. Also, I know that this dude has tentacles on his head, but I'm I'm, I'm kind of hoping that no weird stuff goes down with that, okay? We, we've had enough tentacle stuff happen in this story so far. There's no need for any more. Anyways, though, after that, we finally, finally get the return of characters that we haven't seen since chapter 20. 28, I think. We get the return of Justice and the other two. I forgot their names. But Justice, dude! I'm so, I'm so excited to see this dude back. And while the three of them are there, they're talking about what's going on with Elsie and also what's going on with the Eden Zero ship and how they're both in the AOI cosmos and they hope that Elsie doesn't go meet Nero because that could be trouble. How? I don't know. Maybe they got, like, beef or something? And if they fought, it would be, like, catastrophic? That'd be kind of cool. The three of them then talk about what happened with the Drake and Joe when Justice reveals that Noah's team didn't actually take down Drake and Joe, it was somebody on the Eden Zero. And the big burly dude's like, oh my gosh, that's insane. There's an Ether Master out there as good as Draken or Elsie. That's not in the Eurasian Seas Galactica. And what Justice says next is so cool, bro. He's like, there's one right here, isn't there? Justice about to go crazy in this story. But back to it. Justice then takes a transmission from Colonel Jaguar. Again, another character that we haven't seen since chapter 28, I think. And in that transmission, the prayer council is assembled, otherwise known as the Eurasian Seis Interestelar, I think. And might I just say, these Eurasian Seis members or uh, prayer council members or whatever you want to call them, bro, they look cool. But moving right along, during the prayer council's introduction, we learn what their goal is. It's to take down the Eurasian Seis Galactica. And bro, after hearing their goal, I got one question. Was this group established like two days ago? If not, why did you guys not take down Drake and Joe? Also, speaking of things that I don't get, during this chapter, Holy makes fun of Justice by saying that he's in love with Elsie. And the reason why I don't get that is because it's revealed that apparently Elsie took everything away from Justice and he wants to kill her with his bare hands. And the reason why I don't get this is because this is at least like the second or third time that this joke has been made that Justice isn't, like, in love with Elsie. If you know that Elsie has done this terrible thing to Justice, why would you make a joke about that? Aren't you guys supposed to be his comrades? Oh, are you in love with Elsie? You're always trying to track her down and stuff. Oh, what's going on there? Bro, are you dumb? But moving on to the end of the chapter, where we discover that the fire planet is actually not a fire planet at all. It's an ocean. But anyways, that is going to do it for this video. So thank you all very much for watching. I hope that you all enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next one. Peace out, everybody. Bye.